Wow, what a beaut of a Douglas fir tree. With a height of about 43 meters, a crown spread of 17, and a DBH of about 148 centimeters, it's definitely a catch worth keeping. I just finished recording its measurements to enter it into a Big Tree database, which is a pretty amazing resource. Big Tree databases are community science projects driven by local engagement and participation as a means of identifying and measuring some of the biggest, grandest trees throughout the bioregion in order to raise awareness for the different ecosystems that we live among. But don't let that fool you. Just because they're called Big Tree registries doesn't mean that they need to be the biggest, grandest, or most record-breaking trees, just substantial or noteworthy of some kind. Virgin old growth forests are becoming rare and rare across North America and here in British Columbia they're down to 2.7 percent of their historic numbers which makes finding and locating the last remaining slivers of these healthy forest ecosystems more important than ever. Not only do big tree registries help raise public awareness about these trees and the ecosystems that they live in but they help to identify areas of high conservation priority so that we can keep beauties like this one around for future generations. I'm beyond stoked to have my friend Shauna here from Raincoast Conservation Foundation and together we're going to walk you through the ins and outs of measuring these big trees so you can go out and find them for yourself. So strap up those boots, grab a snack, some gear, and a good attitude, and let's go find some lunkers. Now before you head out into the woods, there's a few pieces of gear that you're going to need that fits easily into a nice little day bag or just your pockets. First off, you're going to need a measuring tape, something loose and floppy, not stiff, rigid, or stretchy, so that you can accurately measure all the nuances of the tree. After that, you're going to need either a, a hypsometer, an inclinometer, which is some kind of technical equipment, but you can get by here with just a smartphone and some really handy apps. Then after that, if you're, you know, unless you're the, the Sir Isaac Newton himself and are capable of computing technical cosine and tangent functions in your head, you're likely going to need a calculator here or again, just a smartphone. And then finally, you're going to need a brightly colored flag, chalk, or piece of tape, something that you can see over a wide distance. Now what's important to be as accurate as possible with these measurements, and in some cases doing it more than once and double checking your work, don't stress about it too much because once you've nominated your tree, a qualified professional is going to come through and verify all these measurements. So you're out for a wander in the woods and you find a big old tree like this western red cedar here and you want to nominate it into a big tree registry near you. Well, there are a couple different ways you can do this. Most big tree registries still operate in kind of an old school method with, you know, a printed PDF form that you fill out manually and submit, but there are a few out there that operate in a more new school way with different apps like iNaturalist where you can submit online. Either way, the process is the same, where you're going to take different measurements of uh, diameter of breast height, the height and crown spread of the tree, and you're going to submit that along with the date, time, and exact location of the tree so that a qualified professional can go out after you and find the tree. Now, all of these different databases tend to use different nuances and rules for how they like their data recorded, so it's important to check with the one you plan on submitting to before going out into the woods. So the first thing you're going to have to do is figure out exactly what species of tree it is you're trying to measure in the first place. You're going to have to ID it. And you can do this by looking at the leaves, the needles, the fruit or cones, or even the bark of the tree. And there are a lot of really good field guides out there to help you do this. Personal favorite of mine is the Podrum McKinnon, Plants of Coastal British Columbia. Shauna, what's your go-to? For ours, Trees in Canada. It's got really helpful illustrations. Yeah, that's a great one. You can also check out my tree guide series on Instagram or YouTube, which can help you with different videos and visuals of what these trees look like, and a very brief overview of some of the classic Cascadian trees looks something like this. Douglas fir trees are often tall, straight trunked beauties with deeply furrowed bark that separates into ridges, and the thicker the bark, the older the tree. They have cones that are about two to four inches long hanging down underneath the branches with bracts sticking out of them. They look like most butts. They also have flat needles that splay out from all sides of the branch. Western red cedars are tall, twisting trees, often with burls and curves in their trunk, with a fibrous reddish-brown to gray bark that peels off in strips. Its needles are flat scales that overlap one another, often resembling a braid up close, and its cones are these cute little one centimeter long upward turned cones that sort of resemble woody little flowers. They also smell really nice. Big leaf maple trees are broad leaf deciduous trees that can have very curving, swooping branches that spread out, often covered in thick mats of moss and licorice ferns. Their leaves are highly distinguishable, being maple leaf shaped and up to a foot wide. These leaves are huge! And their pale yellow flowers droop down in hanging bunches that turned into winged nutlets, also known as samaras, when fertilized. If you're still having trouble getting a proper species ID, there are a lot of really great apps out there that can help you as well, like iNaturalist, where just with a couple simple photos of the tree's leaves, its bark, or the fruit on it, and based on your location, it'll give you species suggestions for what's common around you, and then other iNaturalists can go on and tell you what you're seeing is, is correct, or, or maybe it's totally wrong, and if you're still totally stumped at the end of the day, just be sure to take as many photos and include as many notes as you can in your observation so that a qualified professional can go out and figure out exactly what kind of tree it is you're talking about. 
So diameter at breast height, or DBH, is found by dividing the circumference of a tree by pi. So if you need a little bit of a refresher, diameter is basically the width of a tree, circumference is the measurement around the tree, and pi is the magical number, the ratio of any circle's circumference to its diameter. So DBH is usually found on the uphill side of a tree if it's on a slope at about four and a half feet, which is about the average person's breast height. But of course, people come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. So it's important to know this measurement on your body where it sits so you have a reference point when you get out into the field. And also, nature is pretty wiggly. So oftentimes you'll come across a burl or some branches or something right at four and a half feet that obstructs the way you're gonna measure it. And that's totally fine. Just take the measurement at the next most convenient place and be sure to record that in your notes. There's also a bunch of different nuances for measuring the DBH of a tree that may be growing on a rock or a nurse log or maybe has a split trunk or something and Raincoast has a really great guide which you can check out at the link below which is going to you know help you navigate all those tricky situations. So to get the measurement for DBH, this is where you're going to bring out your string or your measuring tape to get the circumference which you divide by pi but in this case we have some really fancy measuring tape that already has the DBH calculations done on it so we don't even need to do that. Now this is where coming out with a partner makes it really easy because then you can simply have them hold the marker at about four and a half feet there you're going to walk around the tree, keeping the measuring tape straight as you go all the way around the tree. Coming back full circle, we can line the tape up with that zero marker and see that this tree has a DBH of about 185 centimeters. Awesome! So the measurement of crown spread is pretty self-explanatory. It's the amount that the crown of the tree spreads out over a center point, or the trunk. Now because trees are pretty wiggly and crowns are often misshapen, this measurement is taken from an average between two different measurements. So to get the first one, you're going to look up using your eyes, and you're going to find the longest living branch extending from the tree, and you're going to go right to the tip of it. Now if you're alone doing this, you can then use a rock to hold down your measuring tape and, and walk to the other side, or tie it gingerly to a branch, but because I have a my partner here, Shauna, she can take the edge of it and she's going to walk straight back towards the trunk of the tree and all the way back to the furthest living branch on the other side of the tree. And in this case, it comes to 16 meters. That's our first measurement. So for our second measurement, we're going to come back to the trunk of the tree and we're going to draw a line 90 degrees perpendicular to our previous measurement so that we're measuring the tips of the living branches on that side and on this side using the same methods as before. There you go, Shauna. Which in this case is 18 meters. So in average with our previous number of 16, that comes to 17. So this tree has a crown spread of about 17 meters. Sweet. Now when it comes to tree measurements, height is probably the most common one people talk about, but funnily enough, that's actually the most difficult one to accurately measure simply because there's so many variables here, you know, from dense foliage that can get in the way to undulating topography and terrain and all sorts of obstacles that, obstruct, that can obstruct your view of the tree. So the best practice here is to try to take multiple measurements and double check your work to try to get as accurate a reading as possible. Now the general formula for measuring the height of a tree is the tangent of the angle from your perspective to the top of the tree multiplied by your distance from the tree. But of course, there's all sorts of nuances here depending on whether or not you're uphill or down slope of a tree or whether or not you can see the base of the tree. So Raincoast Tree Measurement Guide at the link below is a really great resource that can help you navigate some of those trickier situations. So in measuring the height of a tree, this is where having a partner out in the field makes it really easy because they can hold a brightly colored flag or some chalk or tape or something so that you can see the base of the tree from a distance away. It also makes it easier because they can hold the bottom of the measuring tape as you walk away from it. The general rule of thumb here is that it's much easier to calculate the height of a tree if the distance you are from the tree is greater than its height. So let's start by getting some distance. Oh, and if the tree has any bit of lean to it, make sure it's either to the right or left of your line of sight, not forward or back. Okay, now this looks to be about plenty far. It's about oh, 26 meters to be exact. So we're going to put that into our equation, making sure that we can see the top of the tree and ideally the base if we can. So we can see Shauna over there waving the flag. And then using our inclinometer or our smartphone with our handy app, we can measure the angle to that and see that I'm actually it's zero degrees, which means that my eyes are level with the base of the tree, which is great. That means we're not going to have to add my height to the, or to the answer that we get from this equation. So we're then going to use the inclinometer or our smartphone app, and we're going to look up, and we're going to find 
that the tip of the tree is about 64 degrees way up there. So then we're going to plug that into our equation. Tangent of 64 degrees times 26 meters. Carry the two. That means our tree is about 53 meters tall. Pretty cool. So while we encourage you to get out and collect all of this information as accurately as possible, once you nominate a big tree into a big tree registry, all of these measurements can be verified by a qualified professional who can then locate and monitor these trees well into the future. So there's a few more bits of extra information we can collect to help folks like Sean here find these trees in the first place. Now probably the most important piece of any information here is the exact location of the tree, the GPS coordinates. If you're submitting using iNaturalist, that'll automatically be included in your nomination, but you can also use a GPS device or even Google Maps to find these coordinates. The second part of that is what type of land it's on, is it public or private? This will help a researcher know whether or not they need a permission slip to go visit your tree. After that, you can make notes and observations upon different identifying factors of the tree, you know, evidence of wildlife use or burn scars, different things that make the tree distinguished from all the others around it. Additionally, you can make notes of the flora that surround it, and you can, you know, check out my flora guide on YouTube or Instagram for more information on IDing all of that. And then finally, taking photos is a huge help, both up close and far away with the tree centered in frame so that it's easy to identify. And while you're at it, you may as well take a selfie or two for your own personal collection or to show off to friends and inspire them to get out and find some big trees. So there we have it, all of the measurements and information we need to nominate a tree like this into a big tree registry. If you're looking for a list of registries near you, as well as more information on how to collect all these different measurements, check out the link below. Not only is it a fun way to get outside and explore the world around you, but contributions to big tree registries are more important than ever these days as we continue trying to locate the last of these healthy forest ecosystems. So if you're looking for an excuse to get outside, big tree hunting is about as good as it gets. I'll see you out there. beauty. If you're enjoying these videos, feel free to keep on watching, subscribe to my channel, or help support their production by becoming a patron at the Patreon page listed below. We've got all sorts of sweet perks there, as well as stickers and merch available at nerdyaboutnature.com. Because nature, it's pretty neat, you know. The more you know about it, the more fun you're going to have next time you're out there enjoying it. <laughs>